Hey everybody. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to do a professional level heating and cooling load calculation for a house. Regardless of your skill level, you'll be able to do this quickly and at no cost to you. We'll break up the video into three parts. First, a quick note about codes and standards. Second, we'll do a simple block load for a single zone home. And third, we'll do a more nuanced load calculation for a multi-zone house. So let's get started. To do the load calculations, I'm going to be using HVACer. It's a very user-friendly web-based HVAC design application. So you don't need to download anything. You can just go to the free plan and sign up at no cost. It'll let you do a few projects uh, before you hit the paywall. I'm actually gonna be using the free plan to show you everything in this tutorial today. So step one would be to create a free account, go to hvacer.com and just sign up with your email so you can follow along throughout this tutorial. Now, a quick note about codes and standards. HVACer is a professional load calculation program that can be used for both residential and commercial. In residential, we're talking about houses, manual J is one of the most common methods for load calcs. That's the one you're probably going to hear, but there are other methods for load calcs. ACA, who put out manual J, also got together with ASHRAE and they developed standard 183, so that means you can use HVACer both for your own personal benefit, but you can also use it if you need to print a report and go through plan check. You can look at HVACer's standards here and how they comply. I'll also point out, if you were to dig into the codes, here's an example. If you go to the ICC, you'll see that ANSI, ASHRAE, ACA, standard 183 is the requirement for heating and cooling loads. Basically, what that means is manual J is not the only option. Okay, with that out of the way, let's sign in and do this load calc. Now, before you create a project, the first thing you'll want to do is go to your user profile here and make sure beta features are enabled. Hit save on that, and now you'll have access to all the features I'll be showing you in this tutorial. All right, this first project is going to be a simple single zone home. So I'm gonna create a project. I'll name it single zone. And I'm gonna put in my project address. Now I'm gonna start from a template. Space type is going to be residential. Envelope type, I'm gonna to have to determine my climate zone. So we'll scroll down to the residential climate zones. And if you don't know your climate zone, here's a map. This might be a good place to hit pause and find your climate zone and then come back to the video. This is the ASHRAE climactic data. And from here, I'm in Springfield, Illinois, which is climate zone five. So I'll go back, choose residential climate zone five and create. Now here, I have my project address. There's a number of other inputs, but for the load calcs, I can skip a lot of these. If you go to weather, it's going to show me my project and the nearest weather station. All that weather data gets populated. My building data, I already have some envelope properties populated based on my climate zone template. I'm gonna be using this wood framed wall for my walls and my fixed windows for any windows. Space criteria, my residential space type template brought in these typical values for all my space types. I'm gonna be using this living area and bedroom to cover the block. And then from here, I can actually jump to layout and then spaces. What I'm gonna do, because this is an existing house, I'm gonna click on this map button right here. This is going to show me my project address from Google Maps. Go ahead and click on the settings change it to satellite, and then zoom in to 20, just to give a better view. Now that I've got my house, I'm gonna create a space to cover this block. Create a space here, and then just outline your house.
Okay, now I have the house outlined. This covers my area. It covers the orientation of it. I'm gonna select this. And this is where I input my space data. So for this home, I'll call it my single zone block. The space type is going to be that living area, bedroom, generic space type. For roof type, I'm going to do an attic and other roof. The slab is unheated. And slab is slab height. I don't know, but a good estimate would be 12 feet with a ceiling height of 9 feet. That's a good conservative estimate. If you have a multi-story house, um, you would want to make the slab to slab height whatever the full height of your exterior wall would be. So for a two-story home, it might be more like 20 or 24 feet. From here, the number of people, ventilation, that's all pre-calculated based on your space type and the densities. You can override those if you want, but I'm going to leave it as is for now. So this block is defined. Now I just need to define the exterior. So I go from spaces to walls and windows. And here, I'm going to create a wall, select my wall type, like I said, this will be wood framed, hit enter, and then I just select the lines that represent my exterior walls. In this case, since we drew the whole block, it will be all of the lines. So I go through and select those. This captures the area of the walls and the orientation. I can even adjust these colors if I want. And my walls are defined. Now I'm gonna add some windows. You may not know exactly where the windows are, but to create them, you would define a window with dimensions, define a window type, hit enter, and now I'm going to hover over my walls and place the windows where they are. Okay, that's it. Those are all my inputs for this. I can go back to my spaces and click on this. I can scroll down and get a preview of my cooling loads here. 45,000 BTUs. Here's a breakdown. I can also go to my heating loads and look at those. Alternatively, if you want to see this in a table view or print a report, you can go to loads, summary, expand this drop down until you get to your space. And from here, you can look at all the load information in this table view, cooling at the top, heating at the bottom. And I can also go to reports down here, bottom left, and generate a report. So here I'm going to create a heating and cooling load PDF. And this is going to create a loads report in PDF 8.5 by 11 format that I can download and then send um, or save. Here's my report, I hit download, and I'll open that up. So here we go. This is my cooling information for my home, and here's the heating information. The number to look at is your total load here. This is really what's gonna drive your equipment size for cooling, and then likewise for heating. Okay, now let's say you want to get into more detail and account for multiple zones, maybe some different geometries on a house. I'm going to show you how to do some of that now. For my second project, I'm going to create a multi-zone home. And the first few steps are the same. I'm going to put in my project address. Start from an HVAC or template. Standard 62.2 .2 residential for my space types. And this is the same climate zone as previous. So residential climate zone five for my envelope and create. So from here, same as before, we've got our outdoor data. We've got our envelope. We've got space criteria. I'm gonna jump down to my spaces and take a look at the map. Let's switch to satellite and zoom in. So this is the home I'm looking at now. Here, we've got two stories, 
The second story is broken up in the middle. The first expands out on the north and the south a bit. So instead of doing one single space, I'm actually going to divide this into multiple spaces. So here, as I create my spaces, I'm going to think about how I want to divide them and what the different requirements are for each space. I'm on level one, and I'm going to create my level one spaces. I'm actually going to break them up by spaces that have a roof and don't have a roof. Also, there's a garage here. So I'm going to exclude that garage from the load calculations because it's not being conditioned. So to break this up, on level one, I've got this area here, extends out this far, like so. Then I have this area, which also contains a roof, that extends out like this. And then on level one, I have an area in the middle, which has a floor above it. So that space is not going to have a roof. These are my three spaces on level one. Now up here in the top left, I'm gonna go up to level two and create a space for my second floor, which is just gonna be this block right here. Okay, now I'm going back down to level one and I'm gonna define these spaces. So this will be my level one north. The space type is living area bedroom. There is a roof and it is on a slab. From here, I'll stick with the standard slab to slab height, ceiling height, and I'm good with that one. Now, this space, I'll call it my level one south. Living area also has a roof and is on a slab. Same slab to slab and ceiling height, and I'm good with that. Now for this middle space, Same space type, but I'm gonna leave the roof type as none. It will have a slab, and again, with the slab to slab and the ceiling height. So now I've defined level one interior conditions. I'm gonna go up to level two, select this space type, I'll call it level two. This has a roof, but it does not have a slab. So I'm gonna leave that as none and also input a slab to slab and ceiling for that. So now I have the interior conditions defined for level two and level one. I'm gonna to go to my walls and windows. So here again, I'm defining my exterior walls. So I'm gonna create a wall, wood framed, and I'm gonna select the lines that represent the exterior walls. You'll notice I'm not selecting the interior lines here. And here actually, when I selected this line, it covered that entire line, but I do not want this middle portion to be represented as an exterior wall. So what I need to do is go back to my spaces. I'm going to select this space, right click, hit edit. Now when I go in here, I can hold the shift key and I can break up this line into segments. You can do this as you're drawing your space to just click, click, click to represent each line segment, um, which I did not do the first pass. So I quickly make that edit. I'll go back to my walls. And then here I'm going to remove that interior portion of that. So now my exterior walls are all defined here. Let me make it more obvious, red, like so. Now I'm gonna go up to level two and do the same thing. Create my wall, and I'm gonna outline the exterior walls for level two. Okay, walls are defined for level one and level two. Now I'm going to add my windows. You can take a stab at it and guess where these windows are, but since we're getting nuanced, um, something I like to do, unless I go out and visit a site, um, you can go to Google Maps and you can find most homes on Google Maps and use this 3D view to get a look at the windows. So this is a way to get more detailed with your load calculations. You can see what's going on. You can actually see where the windows are, even get a rough idea of dimensions and be a little more accurate when you're placing these. I'm not gonna do it perfectly, but it'll be good enough to get accurate load calculations.
So based on that, I can create my windows for level one and level two. I might do it like so. Now I'm going to go up to level two, do similar. Okay, now I've got all of these spaces defined, walls and windows defined, but I'm not done yet. So I mentioned this is a multi-zone house. I'm going to go to this zone step and I'm going to divide the home into two zones, level two zone and level one zone. So from here, I would create a zone. I'll call this level one. I'll make it blue and I'm going to hit assign spaces. So here I'm on level one. I'm going to select my level one spaces and now they're a part of the level one zone. Now I'm going to go up to level two and create my level two zone. make it red. So now I select the level two space and my zones are now shown as level two and level one. Lastly, I'm going to go to my systems. Two zones, but they're all going to be served from the same system. And I'm going to put both of those zones on one system. Even if they are on separate systems, um, you could use this feature to see the total load for all your zones. So if you assign all your zones to one system, then you can just go to that system and see what the total is. So here I'll make it green. I'm gonna assign my zones. I'm on level one, so I click level one. Then I go up to level two and I'll click level two, click out. And now all of these are on one system. From here, I can look at a preview of my whole system. Or, like in the previous project, I can go to loads, summary, and I can use this navigation tree to view my different systems, zones, and spaces. So you can go through space by space and see what's going on, or you can go through zone by zone and see what your loads are for level two versus level one. And then you can look at your overall system and see your total block load for the home. Just like before, I can create a report out of this. So I'm going to generate my heating and cooling loads PDF. And I'll show you what that looks like in just one moment. Here it is. Now you'll see this is broken up by systems, zones, and spaces. And I can view the report here. And there you have it. I'm going to post some links to some of the references I mentioned in the video down below. And I would encourage you to go to HVACR.com and check it out for yourself, whether you're a homeowner, a residential contractor, or a professional engineer.